And we're back with some more oxygen not included on the new Spaced Out DLC. Uh, today, well, we've got a bunch of the basic setup, but we still need better toilets. I think we're going to hold out on power for that. Uh, what we really need to do is get some farms down. I'm thinking we're going to place a bunch of farms down here, but first we're going to remove that polluted water. And there's actually a little bit of nice wild food lying around the place down there, over here, up there. We're going to go and try and gain access to all of that right now. But first, I think, first I think we're going to release that water. This uh, requirement for these sublimation stations to have two tiles is actually a little bit annoying for the normal build style. You can't really just stick them anywhere. You have to, well, put them somewhere and then you need another tile to put a deodorizer beside them to stop all the polluted oxygen contaminating the place. I think we're going to be stuck with icky looking oxygen for quite a while. Uh, yeah, the, the double whammy of making them require power for those uh, deodorizers. Yeah, they definitely want you to live with polluted oxygen for a long time. It does cause a little bit of a negative. It gives you, where is it, yucky lungs? Increases air rate consumption by 30 grams a second. So they go from, what, 100 grams a second to 130. And if you've got a, someone with mouth breather trait, then they're gonna have an extra 100 for the mouth breather, 130 fat, you're gonna be consuming 230 grams of oxygen per dupe, well, with mouth breather. That's pretty nasty, but uh, we'll get around it. You know, we're just gonna finish up our dining area here. We're gonna stick in our cooking area at the back. I wanna move that down. I've been looking at these uh, this new building, it's the sludge press. It allows you to turn mud into dirt and water, which, Sounds great. You can also get polluted mud and turn it into polluted dirt and polluted water. So we can turn mud, the mud we found and all that into dirt, but we have 15 tons of dirt right now. We've managed to harvest enough that I think we can hold out on building this sludge press, at least for a little while longer. And that over there, that can all go. We'll just mop all that junk up. Time to continue up here. I want to get my hands on some of these sweetles. Oh, and once that water's mopped up, we're going to turn this entire area here into a farm. Before I put this in, I'd like to point out these bugs now have super long legs. Look at that. Whenever they walk across here, they're like, they can hop up two tiles on those stilt legs of theirs. Okay, that's that's just creepy. That is really creepy. It's not that I'm against bugs, but bugs with legs like that, yes, I am definitely against those. All right, let's uh, stick in a farm here quick. Well, we managed to get the uh, farm tiles installed. Unfortunately, we let loose all the plug slugs. Should have probably tiled it up before I put those on top, but yeah, we'll wrangle them up once we get ourselves a, a rancher, which hopefully is coming along soon. Ask and you shall receive. We've got someone here with plus two to animal husbandry. Unfortunately, yeah, we can temporarily put them in that and then we can always backskill them to something else. They've got a, a skill in cooking and tidying, so they'll be useful for something. Now, just what to call them if I'm going to be a temporary rancher. We'll just call them the dude. Why not? They will take care of our ranching needs. And let's immediately go in and start skilling them up. Ooh, we got lots of skill points to hang around. You definitely, Max Diggity is going straight into super hard digging. I'm thinking I'm not sure I want to skill Mechasaurus up this way. I might stick them into Mechatronics. I'll think about that for a minute. Uh, the dude, you're instantly going to go into improved farming. You're heading straight for critter ranching. And up dog. Oh yeah, we're going to reskill you into rocketry. So I think we'll just give you improved carrying for now. We can scrub you later. You can do some uh, hauling. Research wise, we've got all the cooking out of the way with. We should probably get a ranching done, but there's one thing I want to get done first. And that is, we want to get a rock crusher for metal refinement. Also, I'd like some fire poles and I'd like some auto sweepers. In fact, yeah, I'm going to like everything up till solid transport. So we're going to take all of those. I love the way you can research all of those at one time. That's going to take a little time, even with our researcher. So while that's going on, oh, and our water pile down here is actually, this has almost been drank dry. That's kind of what we were looking for. But once that's gone, we can switch over to this tank. For now, though, up and up we go. There's just copper up here. There's a lot of stuff up here. And I think now that we've uh, cracked open a few other things, we've got some other options. For example, there's some coal over here that we can grab into. And there's bunches of coal over here. We can go straight for coal power if we want, though I kind of do like playing around with the plug slugs. No, no, no. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go dig up some of these uh, spindly grub fruits, and once we've got them all planted, we'll have a, a food source that'll keep us going, at least until we run out of sulfur. Sulfur-wise, what are we looking at? We've got five tons of the stuff. Yeah, I, I think we'll be fine on the sulfur front, at least for a while. With access to all of that secured... Oh, there's actually some plants over there. We're gonna, there's so many of these wild plants around the place, it's amazing. And, oh, there's a little... There's a little pile of clean water up there, we're going to grab into that. But while that's going on, we're also going to fix up our kitchen slash cooking area. We're going to move our cooking station to over here, so to go with my traditional style build. This here will be our little cooking area. We're going to need to fill this pit with carbon dioxide, so the usual trick of coal generator and there's some coal. Well, there's a bunch of coal over here we can go grab, we'll just have to dig through here. Should be a pretty short journey. Uh, first, though, I think we shall, yeah, wall that in. Let's uh, maybe not leave anything to chance for that CO2 to escape with. It will be a little while before we're going to be cooking. Our crops are slowly coming along, and we do have to see about getting some divergent in there. And no, I'm not talking about a movie. If it is tended by a divergent critter, it will produce higher quality fruits instead. So I think if you get a divergent critter in here, it helps the plants. 
So a divergent critter is one of these bugs, or a variant of the bug called a grub grub. Now I think it's already happened up here. You'll see this is a grub fruit plant, and this is a grub fruit plant that has flourished after being tended by a divergent critter. So we need to get some of those bugs into there to tend our critters. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll grab some and the moment we get our rancher up into speed, we'll jump a divergent or two in there and see what it does to them. It should improve food quality and possibly the amount of calories it produces as well. And God damn it, there's one of those. I've been slowly opening and closing doors and putting wires everywhere and hopefully catching these plug slugs just to keep our batteries charged. But it's an annoying process. Uh, where were we? Ah, yes. Dig up here access to all these fruits. We want more food. We need, our calories are going down a little bit too fast. All right, we've stripped out most of this area. We've got our hands on a bunch of the plants. There's still a few I haven't quite gotten around to, but uh, we've got another duplicate to choose from. And oh my God, yeah, the sand just keeps falling down. As well as that, I think we found the space biome. This looks like the vacuum of space and it seems very, very different. There's loads of copper up here, lots of igneous rock. There is some mafic. I don't know what's going on. That seems very different. Is it? It doesn't even seem hot. It seems cold. Oh, I suppose space was normally like that when we started. Anyway, not going to worry about it. Not going to worry about it. We're going to check out what our new duplicate choices are. I think we've already got seven, have we? We might go up to eight. I think we might pause at eight, though. Or maybe we'll just stay at seven. We've got a biohazardous flatulent shabby dresser. It's the flatulent that's a breaker. Plus, they've got doctoring. Who wants that? Supply plus eight. They've also got doctoring over here. We don't want that. And unconstructive. No, we'll just take the calories. Thank you very much. A little bit of calories won't hurt us, especially considering how low we are. Though, yeah, our crops, our first row of crops are starting to come in. So, you know, I think our calories will be fine. I think once we've accessed the last of these crops up here, we're going to dig our way over this side and take it, tuck into that nice big pile of coal right there. While this is going on, there is a couple of things we want to do on the side. We want to rummage through these. Uh, at the same time, we also want to get ourselves up a refinement station. We've got our hands on the rock crusher, so let's just throw one down here. This is going to be temporary for now, but we want to get our hands on some refined metal. We're going to need that refined metal for when all of our research finishes, which is not quite there yet, but soon we'll have solid transports up and running. Ooh, looks like we found a couple of snazzy suits. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, it's got to be brain batter. It'll have one of them. And for the other one, uh, it's Max Diggity because their name is just that cool. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep digging across here, though. Our research is finally complete. We've got all the way down to solid transport. This is kind of crazy now because we do have a mechatronics engineer, which means theoretically we should be able to just immediately build a, an infant food storage solution right now on cycle 21. I mean, we haven't even gotten into power, refrigeration, or even using a CO2 pit yet. Well, I started using the CO2 pit, then realized we were so close, why bother waiting? So let me think here for a minute. I think, yeah, we'll deconstruct that tile. That'll give us a vacuum. Then we'll just do the usual scenario. Where is it? All right, with that deconstructed, that gives us a vacuum. We just stick in a conveyor chute right there. We're going to want some conveyor rails. Uh, you know what, we'll just do the conveyor up to there for the moment. I think we're going to be coming in across the top. And we're just going to dump all of our cooked food in there, and that should preserve it perfectly. I think Mechasaurus the, is currently busy smashing up the rocks for it, but can other people build it? Ah, they can build everything, but they can't build the conveyor chute. Uh, do make sure you have this ladder here. I think they have to be standing on this tile here to be able to build diagonally down there. there there's some weird things about the constructing, to constructing at an angle, or through these diagonal choke points. I just caught it here now. Mechasaurus is building that conveyor rail. They're the only one that can build a conveyor rail. It's because they're the only one that has the skills to do it. They need to have mechatronics engineering. Mechatronics engineers are the only ones who can build conveyor rails. Which means if you want to go infinite food storage, you're going to need one of them sooner rather than later. Perfect. They can also build the conveyor chute and that auto sweeper as well. You can't build the auto sweeper without someone who's got a mechatronics engineer. And bearing in mind now, who's our best skilled do? I think Max Diggity is the best one, but they started with super hard digging. It's it's two. Everyone here has two points. No, at best. So even Brain Bladder here has two points, though I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with their second one. Uh, do Dog's Body here. Dodd? Dodd's Body? Okay. Well, you know what? We'll just leave it as Dodd's Body. Dodd's Body here is also got two points, but that's it. Everyone's only got two points, except for, in a way, Mecha Mecha ah, Mechasaurus. They technically have five points. To get that, you would normally need to have five points on you. That's crazy. We've got this way ahead of schedule, which allows us to get straight into automation, put down an auto sweeper. It just, the ability to store food here in this little vacuum section is going to be so handy for us. We'll just copy those settings across. We'll store all our raw food here. They'll get auto fed by the auto sweeper and then the rest of it gets stored there where the duplicates can pick it up whenever they want. And because it's in a perfect vacuum, we never have to worry about it going off. We don't have to care about this polluted oxygen anywhere. All right, uh, once that's finished, oh, that can be copied over. We'll copy those settings over there. We'll deconstruct that. 
And now we can overbuild food as much as we want and all of it will get, get stored perfectly safely in there. Uh, which reminds me, we should probably get around to overbuilding food. It seems to be a little bit lower than I would like. Where did that meat come from? You know what? Don't care. It's going straight into barbecue. Another thing I noticed here is grub fruit preserve. Okay, grub fruit preserve is... It requires 2,000 calories of grub fruit and 4 kilos of sucrose and sucrose. And you get grub fruit preserve. Long-lasting grub fruit jam preserved in sucrose. Sucrose, okay. Uh, grub fruit nut is made out of spindle grub fruit. Okay, so spindle grub fruit, as far as I can tell, is this stuff over here. This stuff we're going normally. Grub fruit preserve is made out of grub fruit. I'm going to assume that is this stuff over here. Grub fruit plant. Grub, uh, it's spindle grub fruit that's been tended by a divergent bug. Right, so we want to get more bugs in there. Damn it, how's our rancher coming along? Not fast enough. Come on, dude. All right, uh, blueprint. All right, not a big fan of this one here. They've got stuff we don't really care about too much, but we've got someone with operating and a grease monkey over here. So nice little bonus to their machining. They're a caregiver, which actually matches up with their doctoring. So they can become a doctor slash mecha something or other. Uh, let me think for a second. It was really obvious when I thought about it. He's a doctor of robots, Dr. Robotnik. So obvious, so obvious. And uh, that's uh, Dr. Robotnik on the team. That brings us up to eight, which I think we'll stay here for just a little while. I'm kind of curious to explore the rest of the map, and I don't want to get our team just too large just yet. Though, ooh, more crops, thank you very much. We need more food to, with the increase in the amount of mouths we're getting. We've still been going around harvesting the swamp chard, so we're still a little bit behind on calorie production. But we've got our hands on a bunch of coal, so I think we go down and set ourselves up a coal generator. Do we? Actually, let's just dig straight down and find out what's at the bottom of the map. Uh, I think we're pretty stable for a while. Power is going to be an issue, but yeah, we dig down here, put ourselves in some coal generators, and uh, yeah, we can use that to soak up the CO2. Ooh, research. I, I forgot research. I think next up for research, we're just going to get robotic tools and get straight for robo miners. If we're going to demolish the map, we might as well, you know, automate it a little bit. Why not? As this starts up, let's just have a quick go over our little uh, food setup here. Uh, we've got all of the food stored in currently in this, but we want to have it in there in that little vacuum section. So all we do is we wander in here, go to edibles, and let's see, do we want the bog jellies? What exactly do we want in here? Well, here's the plan. We're going to have, say, omelettes, cooked fish, roast grub nuts, swamp chard, and swampy light. All the cooked food. The raw stuff can get left in that container until it's cooked. Everything else gets sucked up in here. Now, if we put that to level 7, that should mean anything in here should get sucked out. Oh, come on. Seriously, that's also level 7. Never mind, we'll make this level 8. One above it. Yep, yeah, there. Swamp chard. All the stuff is going to get dumped across there. Goes across the rail. Dumped down into our little vacuum storage area. Perfect. You can see now it's still accessible though. Make sure you've got your ladders up here. If you're trying to use this same setup, Updog is standing right there because that's the only place they're able to access that from. That's why that ladder is still here. We're also probably going to stick another dining area on top of this at a later date. But that's why this is here. If you try and just leave this flat along here, they won't be able to access it. They need to be like, was it one, two, three tiles above it? Just make sure you've got that in. It catches a few people when they try and use this same design. But that leaves us with infinite food storage for, well, for the rest of the game. Let's uh, dig down here and see what the bottom of the map has in store. We'll, we'll get around to finishing this out in a second. I just realized there's a bunch of free food over here that I have to go grab. Also, there was some free food over here I had to go grab. But once we've grabbed all that free food, we'll go back to excavating down here. Digging all the way down, there's actually not that much to see. This is all granite and igneous rock. We'll keep going here at some point, but I think we want to expand that and put in our power supply. Also, there's a bunch of other spindle grub fruit plants around here that I kind of want to tap into. I'll go be digging across here. First though, let's see if we can't use some of these uh, mining drills we just researched. The, uh, ah, where is it? The robotics tools, the robo miners. I think a few robo miners might help us out about now. Plan is very simple. We're going to drill in across here and then we're going to put in a few of those mining drills. Well, once we smash up some metal to make them. But we've got a printing pod activation, so let's see what we've got to choose from today. I would really like an extra digger to help out with all the digging we're doing, so I'm thinking Rowan here. Plus three excavation, eh, the creativity we don't care about, iron gut, innately stylish, gastrophobic yokel. Hmm, an innately stylish digger. We'll go with fi Fix It Felix. That's slightly oh, accurate, I think we can go with. All right, down here I've noticed there is some magma just at the edge of my vision right there. So this might be one of those maps where there's actually little pockets of oil, or no oil at all. We'll have to find out. Mm, but for now, let's just do some more demolition. I'd really like to see how much more, see a lot more of the map. We haven't really explored nearly enough. We have finally got the tech together and the equipment together to start moving these plug slugs around and get a divergent in there, a divergent critter. 
So we are going to start putting a bunch of the plug slugs that escaped back in there. I'm thinking there's one over here. We're going to grab you. We'll wrangle you up. And where is it? Yep, the dude is now ready for critter ranching. So you will be our dedicated rancher for now. Ooh, we got a couple of other skills. Updog will go straight into improved carrying for now. And uh, Mechasaurus, you know what? I think we will leave you in super hard digging for now. We don't really need any of these other skills, which is kind of embarrassing. Like, Electrical Engineer gives you the generator tuning, but we don't care about that. The improved carries we would really like, but you know what? A good digger right now is, would be preferable. Max Diggity, you are going straight into improved carrying. Uh, fix it, Felix, straight into hard digging as well. We're going to have three diggers at least. It's taking too long to excavate at the map. All right, with that one wrangled up, the next thing we're going to want to do is get some critters in here. So we're going to want sweetles, sweet larvae, and whatever the variant of it is. I think there's one up here. There's a grub grub egg. Uh, you know what, let's bring that down. If we chop that out, it should fall. Uh, that grub grub egg, when it hatches, will probably lead to some sort of grub thing that will be really good at this as well. So we're going to wrangle just one of these. Just one is all we want. Uh, the reason being we only want one, I want to see how many of these plants one of them can groom. I don't want to put in 10 of them if I only need to put in two, you know what I mean? Just put in the, the least amount necessary to get the desired result. All right, we have dropped off a sweetle right here. What the hell did you do? Okay, sweetle tendling growing 8%, I think. Okay, it's done one. The time right now is a... Uh, right, the, the night time is at the opposite side, so we're midday. We'll wait until midday tomorrow and see how many plants it's actually managed to tend to. Though I think it's going to mess with mess with the growths of some of them. I'm going to keep an eye on this. A quick stop for some new printables. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ooh, bubbles here looks pretty good. Plus one to excavation, plus one to construction, plus three to, well, the creativity we don't really care about. Uh, the green thumb and interior decorator don't help, but critter reversion doesn't hurt. And it's basically just a build digger and they're going to have a passion for it. So they should not, uh, the, their morale cost will be very minuscule. Yeah, I'm thinking we're going with this one. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with bubbles. I like the name. We'll leave them as bubbles. Uh, uh, where are we? Okay, we've got three of these. This thing has actually tended three plants so far and it's barely halfway through. It's not even gone halfway. I'm going to keep an eye on this some more. I really want to know what the numbers are on this thing. So here I was, just watching this while my dupes were off doing something else, and we got this new warning. Trapped. One of one or more duplicates are trapped. That's really handy. They can't get down off of there. Well, they should be able to get down off of there now. Yeah, there we go. Uh, perfect. I'll get back to keeping an eye on this. I think it's already done six of them. This thing is actually pretty good. This thing has been working out great. It's already got eight of them converted in a single day. Actually, slightly under. We're just about there at the full mark. So with eight of them converted, it's... Okay, let me try and explain this. Um, the spindle grub fruit here, the, the, the regular one you get before it's tended, it takes four cycles to grow and it gives you 800 calories. However, the spindle grub fruit's food quality is terrible. You can cook it up, which is over here. Uh, if you, damn it, sorry, wrong person. Uh, you can make roast grub fruit nut, which has a food quality of plus one. However, if you were to say tend it with the sweetle, the sweetle changes it from four cycles to eight, so it takes twice as long to grow. But instead of getting eight hundred calories, you get two thousand calories. So it gives you two and a half times. It takes twice as long to grow, but gives you two and a half times the calories, which makes it sort of worthwhile. At the same time, when you cook it up over here, you can cook it up into grub fruit preserve, which has a quality of plus three. And in fact, this year gains 400 calories when it's cooked. This year gains how many calories? Well, 400 calories when it's cooked as well. However, there's a... How do I explain this? Um, yeah, so you would normally get two roast grub fruit nuts. So you'd actually gain... A, you'd have, say, two 800 calorie grub fruit nuts in the same time it takes you to grow one grub fruit. So you would theoretically get about 2400 calories out of growing the just the roast grub fruit nuts. With this, you still get 2,400 calories in the same amount of time, unfortunately. It, there's no real gain as far as I can see here. They work out pretty much identically. The reason being, you end up with two operations of this, which gains you 400 calories a piece, but you only end up with one operation of this. So it doesn't really gain you in the calories as far as I can see. What it gains you with is just a whole bunch of food quality. And all you have to do is put a sweetle in here. And you, you don't even need to groom it or anything. I just dumped it in here wild, and it's already managed to, what, take care of eight of these? in half a day. So these things take four cycles to groom, eight, 16, yeah, say 24. So this thing could, one of them could easily handle 24 plants, but I think we'll stick in a second one. And considering how plentiful they are on this map, yeah, we'll just uh, wrangle them in there. And assuming we leave them enough space, they should automatically reproduce themselves and we don't have to worry about it. I would be interested in actually grooming these and seeing what they'd be worth, but no, no, no. First we want to get to sustainability. As far as I can see, 
these are the only water vents. There's no other vents in the map that I've been able to locate so far. Now, I haven't explored everywhere, but, I mean, we've gone through several biomes. Like, here's an entire sla or a caustic biome. There's nothing in there. There's nothing, and there's nothing around here. All the way across the top, I haven't seen anything. Maybe I'm missing something, and I haven't checked over here, over here, and over here. There's a few places left. But by and large, I think you just get two water vents in this map. I think we're, to find more vents, we're going to have to go to other planets. Which, yeah, we'll get around to it. Alright, I decided to click on some buildings over here, and we've got a teleporter transmitter and a teleporter receiver. Teleporter online, please select a passenger. What the hell? It turns out, if you send a duplicate in here, they will appear on the other side, on a planetoid, it says. Well, that's what the message brought me up. Um, So, yeah, we could chuck someone in there and see where they end up. There should be a res uh, a, something to send them back on the other side. It has one pre-programmed destination. Okay, I'm curious. Now, you see, they've changed this quite heavily. Before, you used to find everything you needed to survive on one map. Right now, we have, say, just say we wanted to run a metal refinery. Normally with a metal refinery, you would put crude oil or petroleum in it. There's there's no crude oil or petroleum on this map that I've been able to see. There's no oil biome even. The only liquid we could put in is polluted water or clean water or salt water maybe or something like that. We can't even make a steam turbine. We've no access to plastic. There's no access to the critters... Uh, Drekos? There's no Drekos, so that we can't even make Drekos to groom them to get plastic Drekos. We're trapped here with two vents of water and no real resources. We have to go to other planets. So I think... Well, first I think I'm going to like excavate this area out here, and I'm going to start trapping this water. Since these are our only two water vents, we should probably put in some water tanks beneath them and really start taking advantage of them. Also, there's a bunch of rust in there we can turn into oxygen. We're currently up to 10 duplicates, and we've got a new printable, but unless they're amazing, I don't think we really want anyone else. Mouth breather, no thank you. Bottomless stomach, no thank you. Unempathetic, that's actually not too bad, but machinery and strength, we don't really need that. I think we'll just take the oxalite, and we'll hold out for hopefully a better rancher or a better rocket pilot. And what are we doing? Oh yes, we're going to dig across here, see if we can't find any more geysers or vents, and we're just doing a little dig out here. We're going to put in a coal generation plant right here. I just... I want to get a coal generation setup done because we do actually have plenty of coal going around. We have run into a bit of a minor issue. We've run out of dirt. That several tons of it actually, yeah, is gone. So we're going to have to put together ourselves a sludge press. This is going to ease into our power supply, but finally having all those plug slugs tied up in their general locations has really evened out our power supply. We've had no problem since. Uh, we're also going to extend our food supplies as well. We're actually a little bit low at the moment. The reason being, as we converted all of these they took twice as long to grow so it is a little bit into our, our food supply but we should be having a crop coming in shortly and that will really take care of us oh, and what was it yet yeah, with this down here the sludge press as far as i can tell you queue something up like say mud and dirt to water we'll do that yeah let's just do that forever what should happen is they'll take the mud they squish put in 150 kilos and you get out 60 kilos of dirt and 90 kilos of water the water will pour in here and it should be clean water you only get polluted water if you put in polluted dirt Okay, that is awesome. That is... Oh, it's a centrifuge for... Okay, and there goes the water. Let's make sure that's clean water. And yes, that is clean water. No germs. No germs. Everything's perfect. And it's really fast as well. Okay, I'm I'm liking that idea. Yeah. With that done, though, what was it? Ah, yes. We want to go back down here, and we want to put in a little power supply with some coal. Uh, oh, what I've started doing with these sublimation stations is it's a bit overkill but I surround them on two deodorizers on each side and uh, I've started doing this pretty much everywhere like even up here you'll see they're surrounded with uh, four deodorizers depending on the location and I just find that people dupes can walk under here and this sitting above it sort of gives you a nice little thing like you'll notice here I've got them two on every level just to make sure that all the polluted oxygen gets filtered and it seems to work okay it's not perfect there's still gaps over here but I'm not running power wires that far not today so we'll just uh, put in our little power supply section down here. We've got our hands on some smart battery tech, though our dirt levels are going up slower than I would like. We're up to 7.5 tonnes, though I think that's mostly the compost. And I realise I can't keep that up or I'll eat into our polluted dirt, which is actually our oxygen supply for now. Uh, we're going to have to be more careful about our dirt in the future, and I think we're going to have to get around to spinning all the mud. It's just slow to do all the mud. None of these are really doing it for me. Uh, plus nine cook would be great, but we're going to work up to one of those anyway, so we'll just go with the algae. Thank you very much. And down here we're bringing this online. We're going to put in a smart battery here made out of iron. Namely because 
there's iron down here. You see there's like little iron patches. Actually, I've kind of set it all to be dug out. You can see there's iron built in these sections. It's like the Badlands. There's literally iron, refined iron, just lying around the place. So we're going to dig it out. Now, I could do, have done a strategic dig section here and went for this section, which was kind of the plan at the start. And then I thought, nah, let's just dig it all. Why not? Our, our duplicates can work on their digging skills while they're at it. For the time being, we're pretty solid. Though our food, mm, actually, our food is getting pretty low. You know what? We are going to maybe plant a few more of those. That should help us along. And well, we've got a couple of divergent up there already to help us out. That should take care of any uh, potential future f future food problems. All right, let's get back to power. For this particular power setup, we're going to go with conductive wire. Conductive wire is, well, because we've got access to iron over here, that iron is going to come in really useful. Uh, new printables. Not seeing anything I like there either. We will just print out the sand. Oh, and as for this over here, what I have been thinking is we're going to throw someone into it. It's supposed to send them to another planet, and I'm thinking maybe that's where the other stuff is that we need to finish, well, getting into space. We're going to need steel and things like that. I don't know, but we're not going to send one of our good dupes. We're going to wait until a, a dupe gets printed out that, that's fairly decent. We're going to look for someone that's got building and digging. I can't, well, they're going to need something like that to probably survive on the other end, assuming they can't get back or they have to dig through to whatever the exit is. Maybe we can keep them alive, maybe we can't. Uh, I don't know what Clay's plan on that one was. Uh, the next annoying problem, though, is we've got to turn everything in here into conductive wire made out of iron. This could take a minute. Unfortunately, we don't have enough iron just yet to replace our entire grid, but we will. There's there's more iron in there. <laughs> uh, once it is complete, we can start throwing coal into all of these. Uh, what's the coal generator? Looking at? Yep. And we'll put an automation sta aut automated sweeper in here to feed these uh, automatically. Where is it? shipping. Give me an auto sweeper. And oh wow. Yeah, you know what? We'll make that out of cobalt. We'll put that right about there. Boom. Also time for the fire pole. I've been pretty lazy about that. So let's just run one from the top of the map to the bottom. Yeah, I think we've cleared out everything along the way. Perfect. That should make our travel distances just a little bit more manageable. We have our generator installed, though we don't have it full of coal yet. They're still trying to complete the power grid. It takes them a long time. Their athletics is not superb. Uh, over here, we've had a grub grub wormling has been, uh, has eventually hatched. I don't know what the hell this is, but it is completely different from what hatched it. These are the sweetlings. They only live for 75 cycles and their eggs incubate at a rate of about, I want to say about 7%, something like that. This thing incubates at a rate of 3%. So it took forever to, what did you just do? Never mind. I, it... This thing is supposed to tend to grub fruit plants, so I think this will do some sort of tending of its own and change the plants in some way, though I have no idea how. It's probably something special, though, because this thing can live to be 150 as opposed to the 75 of the other ones. So I'm not sure what'll happen, but uh, it might be... We might have to wait until it becomes an adult. Well, I'll give it a little time and see. And uh, down here, that's done yet. So, water tank, I suppose. Once these power wires are in, I'm concentrating my, all of my efforts on getting this water tank done. And then we should have all of our basics up. We can just stick in oxygen production. Maybe do food that runs on polluted water. We do have a polluted water vent here. Well, we'll have to check the numbers, but I think we can become self-sustained here. And then I'm going to start worrying about other planets. Our entire power grid has been replaced with conductive wire. That increases the amount of power can carry it to two kilowatts as opposed to one before we start getting overcharges. It should be more than sufficient for our little base. Uh, we should probably throw on one more coal generator there. You know what? I think we will. Though I should probably move that uh, auto sweeper or get the auto sweeper to maybe cover that area. Yeah, I think the auto sweeper can manage that. And we'll just throw in another one right there. That is power sorted. Now, we were doing okay on the power. It's just a case of these, uh, the plug slugs do a good job. Uh, just when we draw a lot of power, especially considering we were running this sludge press pretty much flat out, or we were until we ran out of dirt. I wanted that to, actually no, we're not out of dirt, they still have to bring it all in. Um, it's kind of unusual to have all my duplicates with none of them having any decent skills for carry capacity. But we're going to expand out our battery area here. Temperature wise, I'm not worried. We've got this giant ice biome here beside us we're about to break into. Uh, which reminds me, yes, time to put in a quick water tank. While we're uh, waiting for this tank to complete, something special has happened. This thing got born. What the hell? Look at the size of that thing. It's enormous. And, okay, it does something special as well. It's different to the other one. Where is it? Uh, it gives a grub grub rub. A grub grub rub? Okay, yeah, you try you try saying that five times fast. Okay. This thing will grub grub rub the grub fruit plant. And all that does is gives a 50% growth speed bonus for one cycle. 
so it'll boost the, the growth speed of those plants, which is pretty nice. I wonder what happens if I combine this with Farmer's Touch. Maybe it might make Farmer's Touch actually worthwhile for the first time. Mm, I don't know. I'll have to look into that later. But I will admit, that is a cool looking uh, animal. Okay, but uh, first up, no, we got to get this tended. I think I'm going to dump all the ice and stuff down here. I mean, it's way too hot down here and my dupes started getting scalded. So we'll, we'll dump in a bunch of water. It should help cool things down. Worst case scenario, it'll melt our ice. Well, what I can confirm is the abyss light bug is still here, so this is basically going to boil anything that touches it. Even though it has zero thermal conductivity, it still insta-boils water. I don't know how bad it is. It still seems to be pretty bad. But we're gonna we're gonna cover this whole place in steam and water and see what happens. Though it's going to result in quite a few scaldings. Sorry. Uh, but we will get this finished. This glorious mess has well, created a glorious mess. I'm going to have to mop some of this up, I think. What's the temperature there? Yeah, that's still a little bit too warm in spots, but this side we should be fine. Dear Lord. Uh, but once this mess is cleaned up, I think we'll call it an episode. Uh, I'm sort of running out of time here. Actually, okay, I ran out of time a few hours ago. This is going to be out super late, but uh, the weekend was wonderful. Anyway, for duplicates, what have we got here? Rancher. We've got a rancher. That's it. Welcome, Lino. It's been a while since we've had a Lino on the team. And they will become our main rancher. They'll bring us up to 11 dupes. Ah, still need one to send you that teleporter. I'm really curious to know where that goes. And that, that is oil. That is crude oil that we are going to keep. We might find a use for that later on. Especially making plastic. We need a couple of hundred kilos of plastic if we want to make a, a steam turbine. But here's the plan. We build a liquid tank for this, seal it in. Build a liquid tank for the cool slush geyser, build it in, seal it in. Then what we can do is we can heat this water up and we can feed it to the bog plants. These bog plants, they require 40 kilos of polluted water a cycle. I'm thinking we can, de depending on how much polluted water we're getting out of this, which reminds me I should enable geographical analysis and same on that one. If we're getting enough water out of that to support all of our population, we'll switch over to using that. Uh, these have been great and all that, but it's not sustainable. We have a lot of sulfur. We have 18 tons of this stuff, but we will eventually run out and it's not renewable. Well, it's theoretically renewable if we could get around to getting oil, but we don't have oil here. So if you've got polluted water to make it renewable, eh, let's tap into that. We'll just have to heat up the water first. Then the salt water we can desalinate and we can throw that into an electrolyzer to get ourselves oxygen. That's food and oxygen sorted. Power will be a little tricky. We have enough coal to keep us going for a long time, but what I'm going to do is get this place sustainable and then either we go through here and find out what's the other side and we can concentrate on that while this base ticks along without causing us any problems. Or if that turns out to be a bust, we can go into space and this place will be ticking along behind us and we won't have to worry about it. I really like these warp pipe things. I'm thinking these warp pipes, this is the input, this is the output. I really doubt they are for inter... well, on the same asteroid transportation. I think this is for interplanetary transportation, allowing us to move resources between planets. Uh, that's my theory. But... That'll have to wait for us to find out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and good luck.